Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dumas. This edition Stop Stories. Government encourages adoption of climate smart measures with 190 water tank donation to farming community. Police note marked increase in COVID-19 protocol violations in first quarter of 2021. And export St. Lucia trademarks the taste of St. Lucia brand. The government of St. Lucia continues to secure the future of the island's agricultural sector on multiple fronts. Among efforts is the Economic Resilience and Recovery Plan. Since implementation, major gains have been realized in the sector as the government continues to provide assistance to farmers. Here's Anisia Antoine with this report. The government of St. Lucia, understanding the importance of water storage in light of climate change, recently donated a total of 190 tanks to farmers across St. Lucia. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives noted that the initiative will benefit a great number of producers in implementing climate smart measures to ensure the sustainability of their enterprises. Minister Joseph expressed gratitude to all stakeholders involved in the procurement of water tanks for the farmers. I know resources are limited and I understand that, um, but let's see if we can um, at least scratch some more resources somewhere to see if we can get some more tanks. Especially knowing, like you said, it has been manufactured locally and the whole COVID environment that we're under right now is quite of creating employment, stimulating economic activities in the country. So I want to see to Mr. Bryce, who is the the manufacturers of the tank, his company, thank you very much. I'm sure there's some arrangements within him and your, your department. I want to say to the Department of Economic Development, through you, Mr. Descartes, thank you very much for considering in your repurposing of resources, considering agriculture. And I want to say to the young farmer here, continue the good works. Feel free to contact your extension officer, work closely with your extension officer. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph explained that this initiative also forms part of the mandate of the Department of Agriculture to assist young farmers in becoming more efficient and sustainable. As a government, we have, under my leadership, we have done a lot to assist our farmers, especially our small farmers. I remembered we had what we call a youth in agricultural program. And my experience working with young farmers, they have two major challenges. And I say major marketing, which I'll speak to in a while, is another challenge. But two major challenges. One, the availability of resources for them to be able to um, invest in the initiatives that they have decided to go get involved in. And the other one is land. And that is why when we developed the Youth in Agricultural Program and we approached the Car Caricom Development Fund to get grant funding of $3.2 million, that was the mindset we have. How can we assist our young farmers who are interested in agriculture and who we can, you know, educate and train in new technology. Because what we are realizing is that our agricultural land is diminishing, our population is increasing, our age of our farmers are getting older and older, and we need to introduce young farmers into agriculture, but how we assist them? And that was the mindset and the thinking behind the initiative of the Youth in Agricultural Program. The Minister for Agriculture reaffirmed the government of St. Lucia's commitment to ensuring a more resilient agricultural sector, whilst also enhancing livelihoods for rural farmers, with a focus on both livestock and crops. For the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meanwhile, adaptation planning for the pelagic sargassum influxes and the impact of climate change on fisheries and aquaculture were among focus areas of the recently held 4th UE Open Campus St. Lucia Country Conference. Details in this report. The second phase of the Jeff SGP UNDP Knowledge Fair and the UWI Open Campus St. Lucia Country Conference 2020-2021, which included the first National Honey Show Training Workshop, have been hailed a success. The UWI Open Campus St. Lucia, in collaboration with the Jeff Small Grants Program, UNDP, hosted its fourth country conference under the theme Visioning Sustainable Futures, Confronting the Threats of Climate Change and Climate Variability which provided a platform to share existing research and disseminate information on St. Lucia. Commenting on the close of the three-day conference, UWI Open Campus St. Lucia's Head of Site AG, Mistress Leslie Crean Mitchell, opined that while it was their fourth country conference, it was the first virtual conference. 
it was our fourth country conference, but of course it was our very first virtual con country conference in keeping with the various protocols that we now all have to follow. The conference was a wonderful success. It took place over a three day period. It began on the 15th, the evening on the 15th, with a, an opening ceremony. The conference saw presentations focused on a range of climate change related topics, including historical and future trends of climate related hazards, St. Lucia's climate policy environment towards concrete action. The impact of climate change on fisheries and aquaculture, sustainable harvesting of the incense tree, adaptation planning for pelagic sargassum influxes in the Eastern Caribbean, a St. Lucia case study, and the Eastern Caribbean Solar Challenge. All of them um, focus on climate change, but uh, you, you basically have key areas represented. Um, so the, the Solar Challenge, for example, uh, that is facing the region, that was a big one that was focused on by the OECS. Uh, the huge problem that we've got with sargassum in all of the, the, the islands of our region really, and of course in St. Lucia in particular, um, was paying a lot of attention to. We also had a number of presentations, also from the OECS, um, and Ministry of Sustainable Development, which focused more on the various policies uh, that need to be put in place if we are going to make any inroads on the climate change problem that we are, we are currently uh, experiencing. So we, we did have a wide cross section uh, and we had a, a very interesting one which looked at more the, the, the spiritual um, impact um, of climate change on all of us in the region. It was a very special presentation uh, by our very own UWI uh, PhD candidate. And it really lent a very um, special touch to the proceedings because there is a tendency to view climate change as strictly a, you know, an economic, uh, political, even and of course a scientific issue. But there is also of course the whole um, social and spiritual impact as well. So it really was all encompassing and um, a very, very rewarding few days. Mr. Screen Mitchell concluded that the conference was altogether an enlightening three days, highlighting the urgent need for aggressive climate change adaptation in St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean, while providing local and regional beacons of hope within an often bleak global climate change context. In the same vein, the National Honey Show Training Workshop, held in February, is also being hailed as success by the organizers. The two-day event was undertaken to prepare beekeepers and various others in the sector to participate in the island's first-ever National Honey Show, scheduled to take place in December of this year. President of the Ionola Apiculture Collective, IAC, Richard Mathias, stated that this is the first activity of its kind directed at St. Lucian and regional beekeepers. While the event was facilitated by four world-class presenters, it was under the tutelage of leading expert and certified honey judge, Ms. Jennifer Holmes. Uh, we had a number of very interesting um, uh, facilitators over the two-day period. Um, uh, day one, we had Jennifer Holmes, who is an international honey judge. Um, she's based in Florida. And then uh, she gave us a really good in-depth um, three hours or three to four hours on um, really how to prepare your, your, yourself for the various different categories. Carla Essen on day two, she gave a, a nice one hour presentation on rules and regulations and, and more on the mechanics of how we set up the honey show. Um, but I think uh, two Caribbean um, facilitators were really stole the show. Um, Gladstone Solomon from Trinidad and Tobago, and um, Dr. Valma Jessamy from Grenada. Um, Gladstone has participated or has spearheaded um, Trinidad's participation in the London Honey Show um, for at least from I think, 1987 to either 2000 or 2005, um, where Trinidad has won, participants from Trinidad have won a number of different categories or they've placed 
in a number of different categories. Dr. Valma Jessamy from Grenada, who is a multiple, multiple winner of the Hender Cup also. Um, and, you know, she has been a real trailblazer for the Caribbean and, um, uh, and uh, diversifying the honey, honey product from the region um, in, in, into a more value-added area. So it was really good to have her on board as a presenter. With a very positive response from participants locally and from around the region, Mafias feels compelled to make the island's first honey show a success and concluded that a second seminar will be hosted midway towards the competition date in order to ready participants for the honey show. We still need to do some more groundwork um, locally to get, you know, get our beekeepers um, really ready and prepared so that we can really have a really competitive environment. Um, so there's a, you know, everybody's fully understands the rules and regulations. Um, and we have probably have another seminar um, in June. Um, this is a refresher and to really get everybody acquainted with the rules and regulations and, you know, to get a better idea of the numbers of people that will be participating in this year's competition. But at least by setting the stage early in the year in February, um, beekeepers have an opportunity to start setting aside their best honey or, um, or, or preparing for the various different categories from now. So at least they've got the whole season to really prepare and put aside what they think is going to be their best honey for competition. Pleased with the success of the events organized by his organization, Jeff Small Grants Program UNDP, in conjunction with the Caribbean Youth Environmental Network St. Lucia Chapter, the National Coordinator Giles Romulus indicated that it is the intention of the Jeff SGP UNDP that these activities serve as a fillip for the development of the apiculture industry in St. Lucia and the OECS. He also noted that both components provided a valuable nexus with the broader Jeff SGP UNDP Knowledge Fair ideation component. With its solution oriented approach to existing and looming environmental threats, which must be urgently addressed if St. Lucia is to have any chance of achieving a sustainable future. From the Government Information Service, Hilma Dimark reporting. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force is reporting an increase in violations for the COVID-19 protocols in the first quarter of the year. Between 27th December 2020 and 20th March 2021, 136 breaches were registered by business operations alone. 18 arrests, 118 warnings were issued and one conviction was handed down. Home quarantine breaches persist, totaling 17 for the period. They were all escorted to institutional quarantine. 12 home party breaches were reported, for which five arrests were made. Three complaints were lodged and four let off with warnings. While one arrest was made for one instance of mass crowd breaches, 16 warnings were issued for the rest. Law enforcement was also lenient with the public transport sector. All 162 reported violations associated with minibus travel were let off with warnings. One arrest was made for a hotel breach and 10 warnings were issued for the remaining cases. Superintendent of Police Dr. Mashama Silly discloses that the highest record breaches for the period were mask and curfew violations. Persons not wearing a mask. Total 709. Total arrested 97. Complaints were launched against six individuals. Convictions, 30. Fines were between $200 and $800. One person was given 40 hours community service and another one year probation. Warnings, 606. For this period, arrests tally up to 201. Complaints lodged, 17. And convictions, 40. The public is reminded that mass crowd events, mass gatherings, including river and beach limes, are prohibited. Compliance is especially requested for the Easter holiday weekend. Friday the 2nd of April to Monday the 5th of April, kindly be reminded that curfew will be from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. and businesses are to close by 6 p.m. 
We are still experiencing individuals remaining at the bars, congregating with friends and drinking, or persons congregating on the beaches and drinking and not maintaining the protocols. Superintendent of Police Dr. Mashama Sili there. The government of St. Lucia, through Export St. Lucia, is pleased to announce that it has completed the registration of its trademark, Taste of St. Lucia, with the St. Lucian Registry of Companies and Intellectual Property. The trademarked Taste of St. Lucia currently covers Export St. Lucia's primary sectors of agriculture, food and beverage, agro-processing, and fashion. Export St. Lucia first launched the Taste of St. Lucia brand in 2018 to focus on commanding visibility and increased market share for St. Lucian products in the growing export markets. Through an intervention with the International Trade Center, ITC, Export St. Lucia, aims to fine-tune and convert the agency's Taste of St. Lucia TOSL campaign into a sustainable commercial export brand that approved St. Lucian products and services will carry in export markets. The logo symbolizes the highest quality of goods, services, and exports that will be distinguishable the world over. This cohesive export brand and brand management plan involved extensive and intensive stakeholder engagement. The process required consensus on the guidelines and standards as well as the governance structure and the business model for the export brand. Therefore, the trademark means that any users of Taste of St. Lucia would require permission from the governance committee to utilize the name. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Quayol. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça ou ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachi ou épan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole, ou ni pour mettre ten à di de bac la. Toilet bol la, ka kole, si ou ka wè kole à de bol la avant ou flush li. Un toilet bol qui ka kole, ka gaspille un chai glou. Servi un bon pito en rose pour laver moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de l'eau ou sien pour ou se fle ou. Le ou sauve de l'eau, ou ka baisse manier ou ka servi tepe ou an man. Sauve de l'eau tout le ou ni an chans. Ek chanje, tout de l'eau est pontan. Ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. Now, we join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Quayol. Merci au temps, Homer. Merci, Madame Department de l'Université de l'Université pour les formations en gouvernement cette ci Ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle en Quayol. Posé au Primus Hutchinson. Pepe, qui est engagé en business, qui a débat toujours pour établir en société business sur cette ci qui a trouvé l'occasion pour implémenter, pour ne plus, pour ne plus sécurité, le yoka a cherché l'argent pour être. Ça, c'est parce que l'argent est une initiative pour implémenter ou qui a encouragé les institutions, finances, pour opérer en bas moins suisse, le yoka a prêté le business l'argent. Le département des affaires finances en bas consiste qui est responsable pour guider PPE en façon de produits et compétitions. Ou est responsable pour un projet pour implémenter des mesures de législation cela pour réformer l'initiative là. Avocat des consultants pour le gouvernement cette ci Bota McNamara, j'ai engagé l'implémentation des mesures de législation cela. Il explique que ce qui est possible pour les individus et les business PPE pour sortir en bas fracassement les yoko expérience problème qui critique et pour vivre placer business yo à sous pied encore selon Mark Numara des morceaux de législation ça là qui facilite les mettre business qui en bas pèse pour vivre payer la jayo ça c'est la jayo doué et ben si business yo fond pour aider yo sortir en bas qualité mauvais mal tête ça là et pour placer dette yo à d'ailleurs façon pour aider cause ces business là pour vivre à sous pied encore et pour effacer vieux dette là ça c'est obtenir et ranger à des en mer degré pour business ça là continuer au pour y en a ce gros concept là c'est charme master il déclare que business là avec les individus ça à présent utiliser pour péter par exemple équipement 
qui ont servi à business yo l'auto avec l'argent qui ont en bac con sécurité les ont prêté l'argent il a ajouté que les institutions finances tenir antiquatif pour embrasser façon ça là parce que la partenaire assez bonne manière pour ça te enregistrer mais après plusieurs consultations et puis ça c'est hot bank mondial et puis association bank c'est le si chambre de commerce et uh, les sections des affaires la loi pays a il était capable pour mettre tout arrangement en place à présent c'est le ma frère deux mois sur législation ça là j'ai parlé pour parler devant kai parlement pour trouver approuvé Les étudiants ont l'école des enfants et première à Denry. Vous avez divers articles pour l'école qui sont en train de consulter cette ci à New York. En collaboration et puis fondation Make It Happen, en parmi plusieurs autres qui font contribution aussi. En parmi ça, ces étudiants aussi, c'était Cléon, Bag l'école, en parmi l'autre nécessité l'école. La présentation a été faite le 17 à mois de mars pour ces principales de l'école. C'est le Conseil général à New York, Alvin Landers qui a conduit l'initiative là, M. Landers, c'était un étudiant en temps passé à l'école première d'Henry. Conseil général là, oui, mais c'est tout qui fait ces présentations, ça là possible, à bas temps web, ça là. En parmi ces sept qui ont fait présentation, en hein, réalité, c'est Alfonso Maki, au club Lyon, c'est ici à Hartford, Raquel Prosper, Sally Etienne, association c'est ici en Amérique, Hot Connecticut. Club Domino Setlisi, Mam Lavish Crew, Hot Hartford, et uh, Fondation Make It Happen. En parmi les officiers qui étaient présents durant la présentation, c'était le représentatif Parlement pour Sud Denry, qui est aussi le ministre qui est responsable pour affaire jeunesse export en gouvernement Setlisi, ça c'est Honorable Edmond Estefan. Greg Fondation Make It Happen, Madame Raquel Dubly Chasney, principale pour l'école première à Denry. Cheryl Francis, et principal pour l'école des enfants, Madame Mary Flavier. Selon Madame Chasney, c'était un plaisir pour faire cette l'école ça là, avoir ces cadeaux, comme saison l'école là l'année passée pour l'année ici, déposer un pile pèse à ce particulièrement les plus jeunes étudiants, c'est des enfants. Représentatif parlement, on a Edmond Stéphane, oui, merci, tout le monde qui a fait ça possible, et servi l'occasion pour encourager tout le monde pour prendre la vaccine contre la maladie corona. Plus que 200 étudiants, vous suivez ces cadeaux des articles d'école. Le rapport qui sorti mardi passé, le 23 en mois de mars, montre que le ministère de la Santé a enregistré 17 cas de maladie corona. C'est le mot qui a sorti à un groupe de 189. Toutes ces individus-là se sont trouvés testés à ces diverses cliniques en ces communes et étaient en quarantaine par des résultats de résultats. Présentement, le ministre de la Santé a fait un arrangement pour tout trouver en isolation et pour commencer à chercher pour qu'ils ne peuvent pas contact. Et puis, le rapport aussi a montré 13 individus qui ont trouvé la guérison et ça a placé le mot cas qui est actif en hauteur de 124. Dès en ces cas critiques et à l'hôpital pour le moment, ces cas neuf salages ont placé le mot cas corona qui a enregistré en cette ci pour 4,149. Le ministère de la Santé aussi a un rapport de deux personnes qui sont en résultat de la corona. Ils ont un homme à l'âge de 65 ans, qui a choisi, et qui a une femme de 70 ans, qui a castré. Le ministère de la Santé a séparé et puis la famille de la mort. Le ministère de la Santé a plaît pour annoncer que depuis le 22 mars, en total de 2,482 individus, j'ai aussi vu la vaccine, et la vaccine aussi pour les gens qui ont qui sont malades, et bien les plus grands citoyens qui ont continué pour juste le 26 en mois de mars. Je vous demande si vous avez des gens qui ont été pour faire un appartement en wellness center qui est plus pauvre. Le ministère a conseillé tout le monde pour continuer pour toute précaution contre la maladie de corona. C'est comme ça. Nous avons trouvé nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour continuer à garder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je puisse encore vous présenter une autre nouvelle en Coyol. Après ça, je vous remercie de vous présenter une autre Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NPN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You could also catch up with us anytime 
on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Hilary Mark. Thank you.